Hello everybody, World War Boy here with another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the World War II US M1A2-1-1 non-combatant gas mask. Alright, so jumping in with this, the first thing I'm going to say is I don't know too much information about this mask. Um, I know a little bit, a few things about it, not really as much as I'd like to, so um, I probably need to do some more research on it and find out some more things about it, but the, in the time being, I don't really know much about it, but I figured I'd go ahead and film a video on it anyway. So, uh, starting out, this was actually the first gas mask that I bought. And I believe I picked it up for about $40 at a uh, relatively local uh, antique store. Now, what's special about this one is um, for $40, I got it with the original box, the gas mask, of course, the original uh, booklet that came with it, and the bag here. Now, unfortunately, um, the bag uh, recently, the snap right here on the front, is used to close it right here, um, broke off, um, you know, the bag's in all right condition already, decent condition, but, uh, unfortunately that happened, so, not as in as good condition now, but I'm not really too sad about that, I mean, of course, the mask being around 75, 76 years old, then that's understandable, uh, but anyway, so, starting off, I will start out with the box. Now, this being a uh, non-combatant gas mask, these masks would not be used um, in battle. These would be civilian issued. And as far as I know, these masks would be issued to civilians in potentially hazardous or, you know, more likely areas to be attacked by either the Japanese or Germans. Um, as far as I know, these about six million, I believe, of these masks were made and produced from either 1941 or 1942 up until the war's end in 1945. But anyway, taking a look at the box at the top here, you can see this box contains one non-combat and gas masks, M1A2-1-1, size child. Uh, of course, they also made these masks in adult sizes, uh, small, medium, and larges, but I think, uh, as far as I know, the child masks only came in uh, one size. Uh, but also looking at the box, there's a lot of information on the front, uh, the purpose of the mask, do not use, and um, basically how to store it and whatnot. At the bottom, property of the U.S. government, uh, 1.8 pounds, and then over here, Talon Incorporated, and we also have a small ink stamp that says 2-43. Now, uh, I may be wrong because I'm not 100% certain on it. I believe the 43 may stand for 1943, but uh, I'm not really certain on that, so can't be too sure. Uh, taking a look at the booklet that came with it uh, on the front, your gas mask, read this booklet uh, until you know it by heart, what it contains, and flipping through the pages, uh, you know, information about the mask. Names to know about the mask, inside the canister, how your gas mask works, putting on the mask, testing the face, pay, face piece in a gas attack, uh, and then in the last few pages we have different um, types of gases that could be potentially used and um, information about them, and then at the end we have decontamination. And on the back, first aid. Um, most of the ones I've seen for sale actually uh, don't um, have the box or the booklet. Now, I have seen them for sale with the box and booklet, but those are more rare, I would imagine, and worth a little bit more. So I'm pretty happy with the price that I bought this one for, but, you know, 40 bucks isn't bad, so I'm, I'm relatively happy with that. 
uh, taking a look at the bag, like I said, the snap has recently come off, so that's a little bit of a downside. At the top, we have a lot number. Uh, I can't actually make that one out clearly. Lot 42 something, I believe. Then you can see U.S. Non-Combat and Gas Mask M1A2-1-1 Child Property of the U.S. Government OCD. And at the bottom we have a, a grommet, which uh, is actually a hole in the bag. And then just a really simple uh, strap system. Now the gas mask actually fits very nicely in the bag. It's very snug fit. And then the top folds over, of course, and you would close it by snapping it. Uh, there's the bottom. But, um, yeah. So that's it in the bag. But now let's take a look at the mask itself. Now, uh, when I bought this, I'm sure you've already noticed there's uh, paper inside of it. When I bought it, it, it had the paper in it already. So I decided why not leave it because I know a lot of people actually display gas masks with, um, you know, paper in them to help them keep their shape and whatnot. So, moving everything else aside and taking a look at the mask itself. Um, now the first thing, well, probably not the first thing, but one of the first things you'll probably notice is that the filter is permanently attached. Um, the only way to remove it is to take out that screw right there. Uh, so it's pretty much a one-use gas mask. Um, the filter, uh, this being a, a lot older mask, primarily a World War II mask, the filter most certainly contains asbestos. Now, I know a lot of World War II masks contained uh, blue asbestos in the filters, which is one of the more um, extremely hazardous versions of asbestos. Now, I'm not sure if this has blue asbestos in it or not, but I'm uh, most certainly not going to be putting this one on just because of that reason. I'm not 100% sure, although I do know it has asbestos in it. I'm just not sure if it is blue asbestos or not. But anyway, at the top of the mask right here, you can see it says child uh, for the size, of course. Now, if this were a adult mask, it would either say MED adult for a medium adult or a small adult and, you know, whatnot, large adult. Um, this mask is uh, almost made of like a cloth coated in rubber, very thin layer of rubber. Um, we have a stamp here, not really sure what that's for, and then we also have here a uh, exhale valve. At the bottom of the filter we have a really thin rubber um, inhale or intake at the bottom of the filter. Um, large eye lenses, large uh, plastic eye lenses. These aren't glass, of course. Um, I believe we have a six-point harness system on the mask. Um, for its age, this uh, elastic is actually in very good condition. Uh, and the mask itself, the rubber or the rubberized fabric is in decent condition. The only part of it I have a problem with is right here at the chin. This part's a little bit dry rotted, but other than that, the mask is in really good condition. Um, inside the mask, it's really simple, not much to it. That hole, of course, goes straight down into the filter where the asbestos is. And then we have um, warning and instructions and to prevent eyepiece eyepieces or mask from fogging, uh, information on the filter itself. But, um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty decent mask. I like it. Um, I, I, I wish I could wear it, but of course, unfortunately, I can't. Uh, maybe one day I'll think about wearing it. Uh, just not really right now. So, um, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.